If you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. This has been another episode sponsored by Online Horse College. If you haven't had a look at the wide variety of equine-specific accredited courses, then go to onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. On today's Horse Chats, we're going to have Anne Batley, who's coming back as a guest again. She's already been on before on 090. But before I introduce Anne, I'd like to remind you about Sophie Barrington from Archer Creative, the experts in equine business marketing. If you've been frustrated by a low return on investment from your marketing efforts, then talk to Sophie. Sophie can help you with copywriting, public relations, social media, email marketing, graphic design, website design, and lots, lots more. Contact Sophie just by going to horsechats.com, search for Sophie, search for Barrington, or search for Archer Creative, and you'll find her contact details. Now back to Anne. Anne has been a guest before, as I said, on 090, but today she's coming back to talk to us about 10 tools for the Successful Riders Toolbox. How are you today, Anne? Oh, I'm fantastic. Thank you, Glenn. It's lovely to chat again. Yeah, it is good to talk to you and catch up again, Anne. Now I'm going to throw you in a little bit, but the 10 tools for Successful Riders Toolbox, it's a good topic, but why did you choose this particular one? Well... Because I teach a variety of people, a lot of them are not that competitive, but there are the few that really are. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why not Why not put something together that the really competitive person could relate to? And they really do need all these 10 um, tools to be successful in the highly competitive equestrian sports world today. Okay, okay. And this is where you can take them from an ordinary rider to an extraordinary rider, is that right? Absolutely. Yep, yep. All right then. The first one you've got is become a better horseman, not just a rider. So can you fill us in a little bit more about that? Talk to us about that. Well, a horseman is someone that really understands the characteristics and the behaviour of the horse. And they work with their horse to cause their horse to think and act in in the way that they'd really like to, you know, for the horse to do. Mm -hmm. And they can bring out the potential of the horse using a harmonious connection and a unity based on mutual trust, really, with the horse and understanding. In other words, really simply, we, we really need to think like a horse and approach our training with the horse's psychology in mind. So... Because we're in the age of instant, I think a lot of new riders today um, have the finances available to buy a trained horse. And they don't necessarily, they haven't necessarily learnt the basic skills on how to train a horse. And sometimes that can lead to trouble. Um, Because I found a lot of my riders have this problem. They buy a well schooled horse, but they really don't know how to. yeah, how to get the best out of it, and it can lead both the horse and rider to frustration and confusion, and sometimes a lot of resistance pops into that. So yeah, probably a yeah. faster option, but not necessarily the best, yeah. maybe. I was going to say it's great to buy the trained horse, but you've got to remember that horses are people too, and I like the way that you've said that you're trying to prevent the horse getting frustrated as well. It's not just about becoming a successful rider, but you're looking at the horse's point of view as well. Exactly. Yep. All right. Now, the second tool that you've got is control of your horse. <laughs> it's a bit essential, isn't it, that yes, we're definitely. safe around horses? Mm-hmm. I never realised how important it was, I don't think, but I do now that I'm getting a little older. And, you know, when I look at it, I I watch the horses all the time. And for them, it's like a pressure release game if you watch the horses. And the horse that moves its feet first, um, they lose. Like if uh, if I can get eventually, if I can get um, to move my horse's feet, then he moves his feet first, and I'm really the leader. So because the horse's feet are connected to his mind, if you can control your horse's footfall, you can establish 
um, you can establish for the horse that you're the leader. Yeah. I like that game too, he who moves his feet first loses. It's a good one to think yeah, about. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, number three in the toolbox we've got is self-control. So this would be self-control for the rider. Yeah, tell us a bit a bit more about that. Well, I think before you can control your horse, you really do need to control your own emotional state. Mm-hmm. And because horses are so very perceptive, you can't fool a horse and they can read your body language better than you could ever imagine. So anger and a bad attitude can have no place when you're training your horse. And, you know, you really should never, ever discipline your horse in anger. doesn't matter how grumpy you feel. Yes. So most aggressive control I've found, though, with my riders, um, if they get, you know, overly um, happy with the whip and the spurs, it's really born out of their fear or frustration at not being able to do something. Okay. And the key to changing that is for them to get more knowledge. It's such a broad thing, isn't it? You know, like I know that you said that if you've got these 10 tools, changing from an ordinary rider to an extraordinary rider, but just that whole self-control, that's not just a horse skill, that's a life skill. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And we should be taught it at school, really. It's a shame we're not. Yes, I think we are to a certain extent, but not to the uh, degree that's really required. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number four, increase your equine knowledge. Yeah, well, the more knowledge you have about the horse, the better equipped you'll be to keep your horse relaxed and healthy and train him and ride him safely. And probably the key word here is to be effective with it. Yep. And that includes, you know, that includes learning about nutrition. I'm, I'm the worst person here because it's really easy for me to overfeed and underwork my horses. <laughs> And that can result in behaviour problems. <laughs> That's my fault. So I've also learned about herd behaviour. And importantly, people really need to know the mechanics of the horse's movement. And that's really important because if, they're, if they don't understand how the horse moves, it's really hard for them to be part of his movement in harmony with him if mm. they've got no idea how he actually moves. Yep. yep. And it's yep. good It's good if they can immerse themselves in horse psychology as well. All right. Now, and the next tool we've got, the fifth, is leadership and alpha dominance. You talked a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, he who moves his feet first loses, and you talked a little bit about leadership there. But go on. I'm sure you're going to talk in a bit more depth now about this fifth tool, leadership and alpha dominance? Well, leadership, communication, respect and partnership all start from the ground first. So horses and humans really couldn't be any more different. The horses are prey animals and they're perfectly evolved for survival with fabulous flight instincts. And your horse just sees you as a predator and really a good visual is he sees a spotted leopard. So our natural instincts as humans, when something goes wrong in the horse, they're all wrong. We quickly turn into that spotted leopard in the horse's mind at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really you can look and see how your horse behaves on the ground and that'll give you an idea of what you'll get when you're riding. And horses are motivated by something they think is in their interest. So the key to good training is knowing how to create the kind of motivation that your horse needs to be willing to do exactly what you ask of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that comes from groundwork. Yep, yep. So the groundwork, you use that as what foundation to build on the aids because you've got here number six in the equine toolbox is groundwork. So you sort of led on to that one beautifully, haven't you? (laughs) Without even thinking, absolutely. (laughs) The crown work is so hugely beneficial for both the mental and physical development of the horse, and it just improves the rider coordination so much. And the groundwork's the foundation on which you can build all the aids, and then you can fine-tune them when you're riding. And it establishes trust and confidence with your horse in your leadership, and therefore it gives you security to the horse. They trust you. Mm. And you have to learn how to be effective, you really do, in communicating your message or your aids 
with your horse. Yep. And you really want to have one that's relaxed, responsive and willing before you get on it. Yes, yes. So if they're relaxed and responsive and willing before you get on, then there's a lot more chance or a lot better chance that they're going to be relaxed, responsive and willing when you've got on. Absolutely. Mm. So number seven, you've got it's essential to have an independent seat. Would you like to speak a bit more about that? Well, certainly without it, you can never ride in balance and harmony with your horse. Yep. Because when a rider's taken the time to achieve what we call the independent seat, it really means that they're able to connect continuously to the horse's movement and remain in balance without the support of the rein contact. Importantly, really, it means the rider has independent control of their seat and leg position and they're able to time the aids correctly. I mentioned that before, that they really need to know how the horse moves Mm, and then if they've got an independent seat, they can move independently with their hands as well. And being lunged can help that um, with their balance and timing and exercises without stirrups And certainly without their reins, that can all help them get that independent seat. I've got a little a little ditty that I love. It's independent seat and independent hands equal a happy and relaxed horse. On the other hand, (laughs) unbalanced riders have unbalanced hands, but they are unable to time their aids properly, and that leads to a confused horse, which can lead to resistance. Mm. Mm. And I like the way that you said confused horse, not naughty horse, wrong horse, but just confused horse. They can't behave if they're confused. I, I agree. I really don't think there's very there's very few naughty horses out there. And if they are, then they've had such a bad experience with the two-legged variety, they just have lost total trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my opinion. <laughs> I think it's a lot of people's opinion, but, you know, we live and learn. <laughs> Okay, now the eighth tool you've got here is personal rider fitness. You want to talk about that for a bit? Well, to become rider fit, you really need to ride on your horse. Um, You can do lots of exercises to have good core strength. Um, A lot of people use Pilates and yoga. All these things are really good. And to have rider fitness, you really have to be healthy and energetic and it's up to you to look after your body and to be able to connect with your horse and follow its movements in walk, trot and canter. You have to be really flexible. You've got to be supple in the hips and the back. And I know that all of that is difficult as people get older and we have, you know, some infirmities, but you've just got to work on your own personal fitness to be the best rider you can be and be able to be relaxed on your horse, you need to be fit. Yep, yep, yep. And fitness has got to be hand in hand with that essential seat too because you've got to have a certain amount of fitness to be able to keep your seat independent. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you do. You need good core strength for that. Yep. All right, so we've got the ninth here. You've got one of the most important tools is reward often. (laughs) Well, I believe that to the horse, pressure can be seen as punishment yep. and lightness is the reward. So mm-hmm. when the horse moves away from the slightest pressure, the pressure is removed and that equals freedom to the horse. So when we're riding, um, the horse really will appreciate the reward of a loose rein and the opportunity to stretch his back muscles between exercises that we do. And you don't have to ride for half an hour on the on the bit. You can, in between exercises, you know, give them a loose rein, and you can do it in walk, trot, and canter. It shouldn't make um, any difference to the pace. So you can reward them and give them a rein just for a few strides, even. Yep. And when done correctly, your horse really won't lose his line. He shouldn't lose his direction, nor impulsion, and he shouldn't change his rhythm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a necessary thing for riders to be able to do, actually, yep. to reward the horse by giving a loose rein because then you really see what the horse thinks about what you what your aids are, really. Mm. But even a soothing word or an encouraging um, word, they listen 
they listen to what your voice says. Mine do. Yep. Or yep. they love carrots. Yeah. So yes. If you reward clearly and often, um, that yeah, every lesson should end on a good note. It mm-hmm. really should. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if the horse has done an amazing job and you've only been riding for twenty minutes, then if you end the lesson early. That in itself is just a huge reward for the horse. And I think one of the most important decisions that you need to make is, as a rider, is knowing when when to end your lesson. Sometimes we just push it that little bit too far. So if you mm. can end a lesson early, it has great consequences for the horse. They look forward to you. Ending. Next day. Mm-hmm. And there's so much timing yeah. in it, isn't it? Even to the moment, the timing of each step, but then the timing of, you know, you talked earlier about allowing the horse to have a stretch, the timing in that, but the timing to know when to end a lesson as well. And that comes with, yes. I suppose, a lot of experience. But the experience, you've got the last one, and this is where we sort of can talk about experience, but you've also got find yourself a mentor or coach because they can speed up that experience. So would you be able to talk a bit about that as well? Well, I think we all need help. And if you can find someone that you aspire to be like and admire and you seek out that person that has an amazing partnership with their horse that you like the look of, then a good mentor can be a great benefit and your coach. Well, they need to be positive. They need to be like-minded like you and can help you along your journey. I I still think that constructive criticism and positive feedback are really essential. And your coach can help you set up and achieve your long and short-term goals. And they teach you to develop those technical skills that we were discussing before. It's important to know how to do something. It's important to know why you're doing it and which aids are correct and when to apply them. And most of all, you have to enjoy the journey of being a rider. And, yeah, it's a huge journey. I don't think you ever get to the end of it. I think you just get better and more knowledgeable as you go along. I think that's one of the benefits of the journey is that you don't ever get to the end where you know everything. You know, there's always something to learn. And so long as you're open-minded, you can just keep going with it. Absolutely. I think everyone has something to offer. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's, courses are wonderful. They teach you such a lot about yourself. Yes, yes. And I think, you know, we already talked about you bringing a couple of life skills in. So I think these these are tools for successful riders toolbox introduce a few life skills, but I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. Now, when you did this, Anne, you used a book reference. What was the book reference? We can put that on your page, which will be horsechats.com slash Anne Batley 2. But we'll also put this book reference on as well. Um, there was a bit more than, than 10 tips, but I think you've picked out the best ones. What's the book reference that you'd like to say? Well, I found a book called 101 Horsemanship Exercises by a lass called Rio Barrett. Okay, good. And um, very good book. Okay, and we'll put those on your page. If you're an equestrian coach or a horse riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look at the free video series for horse riding instructors on the Horse Chats website. Go there now. Have a look. Horsechats.com. Now, Anne, if people would like to contact you, because you do coach you, and I'm sure that you give your students lots of value, if people need to contact you, what's your contact details? Um, I'm going to actually have a new website up in the next month. Good. But That's okay. Give us the name of the new website and people can go there. And if it's not up yet, they can bookmark it and come back a little bit later. Okay. It's going to be called harmonyhorsemanship.com.au. That's a good name. I love I love the thought of being in harmony with the horse and, and that, that comes probably from a lot of that um, Rio Barrett. Book and on the front cover, everyone will love the front cover because she's riding in a saddle actually, but she hasn't got the bridle on, and the horse is definitely happy. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it's all about. So that'll, that'll be the best way, and for email, they can email me, which is at batley at reachnet.com.au. 
and we'll put those contact details on your page as well. Remember, it's horsechats.com slash Anne Batley 2. And if you'd like to just go to horsechats.com, search for Anne, search for Batley, and you'll find this episode, previous episode. And Anne was one of our more popular episodes as well. So she's got a listener's choice up there. Okay. Anne, thank you again for coming in and talking to us. And I know we had a few technical issues yesterday, but we eventually got through. So it was good talking to you and um, just excellent. Looking forward to catching up with you again. Okay. Thank you so much for the chance to do it. Bonus. Bye-bye. Bye. Now, if you're still there, you probably know that I'm absolutely passionate about education within the horse industry. That's why I host this podcast. My other venture is Online Horse College. Have a look now at onlinehorsecollege.com and I'll see you over there. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 